Hello everyone, and welcome to the Tori and Ren YouTube channel. In today's video, we have two things. We have the tutorial for the ultra mini version of the two-tone shell bag, and we also have a giveaway, which I'm really excited about. So over the last week or so, we actually jumped from 500 subscribers to 1,000 really quickly. So I wanted to do a little giveaway. Since I typically post sewing tutorials on this channel, and this video is also a sewing tutorial, I thought it would be fitting to give away a kit for one of the projects we've made here on this channel. So the project kit is for the two-tone mini shell zipper bag. So I have the pattern here for the original size. And then you're also going to get materials to make both the original size as well as the ultra mini version that we're going to make in today's video. So you're going to get the hardware for the ultra mini. You have a choice between a swivel hook and a D-ring. You'll also get the zipper pull, so two for one bag and two for the other. And then enough zipper tape for both this size and the mini, the ultra mini. And then you'll have two fabrics here from the Heavenly Hedgerow line by Jane Cargill. I think it's Hedgerow. Um, but you'll have the mushrooms for print A and this green strawberry fabric for print C, the lining. You'll have the fusible fleece. And you'll have this lovely faux leather by Sally Tomato for print B. So I'm just going to move these all away and I'll explain how you could win. Now I also bought some of the same fabric for myself because I thought the mushrooms were just so cute. And I made one of the ultra mini shell bags to show you what your bag could potentially look like. So I just have the mushrooms on the front and back. I fussy cut this one so it was right in the middle. And then I have that really nice faux leather here on the bottom. I chose a D-ring for mine and I have the same zipper up here. So if you win the giveaway, your ultra mini shell bag can look just like this one. So if you'd like to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed to the Tori and Ren YouTube channel, so this channel here, and also leave a comment down below. In the comment, it would be great if you could introduce yourself, maybe include your first name and where you're from, and it doesn't have to be specific. It can be maybe a country or a state or province because we do want to be safe online. We don't want to be too specific. And um, in your comment, it would be great if you could also maybe include your favorite thing about sewing. It would just be really nice to start to form a little bit of a community, community here where we all know each other. Um, for anyone who's new here, my name is Serena and I'm the one who does the sewing tutorials here on this channel and I'm from Ontario in Canada. So it'd be really nice to get to know some of you um, and know your names because sometimes our usernames are different from our first names. So it'd just be really nice to do that. And this giveaway will be going on from the day this video is posted until November 26th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the winner for this giveaway will be selected randomly. It's open to United States and Canada residents only. Um, I don't have a lot of experience shipping internationally, so that's why I'm just sticking with those two countries for now. Um, maybe in the future I'll open it up internationally. But the full details for the giveaway will be down below in the description. And good luck to everyone! Now, getting back to today's project, I just wanted to quickly show you some of the color options that you can use for the Ultra Mini Shell Bag. So here I have one with some berries and some brown faux suede. I have gold hardware on it. This is a gold swivel hook. This one here has no hardware, but it just has this blue tea fabric and this blue faux suede. It has a really nice brown antique zipper. This one here has little cat fabric with this like creamy um, gray faux leather. That's another cat on the back. This one here has a fox and it has this green faux leathery vinyl. It's more of a vinyl. It has a little hedgehog on the back. I almost called it a porcupine. And then again, more hedgehogs with mushrooms and this brown faux leather. And then this is the one you saw earlier with the mushroom fabric and the brown leather. So there's so many different um, combinations that you can use. So I just wanted to show you some ideas. So to make this bag, we're going to need two templates. We're going to need the round template and the bottom template. So if you purchase the original size of this pattern, all you have to do is when printing, set the scale to 65% in the print window and you'll get the correct size. Because this um, ultra mini version is an addition done after the pattern's release, this will no longer measure one inch since we're scaling it. Now, if you didn't purchase the pattern, that's no problem. We're going to be making the bottom template here in this video and I will be providing you with the round down below in the description box. For the bottom template, if you're going to be making it, 
You're gonna need a piece of paper measuring five and a quarter wide by four and a half high. So I have mine here. And I just wanna give you all a heads up that I actually base this measurements off of the 65% scaled one. And I actually had to round them slightly because on typical quilting rulers, they will typically give you either eighths of an inch, um, quarter of an inch or an inch. They don't give you that small of measurements. So I rounded it up by a sliver here. And the same thing over here, just the slightest amount. That way, when you're using your quilting rulers, um, you don't have to get these really, really, really small measurements. So I rounded it to five and a quarter and four and a half. So I just wanna give you guys a heads up that they're not exactly the same, but they're as close as possible so that the template would be easy for you to recreate. So taking your cut piece of paper, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring those five and a quarter inch edges together and fold it in half. So just like that we're then going to bring the fold side toward us so here taking a ruler and a pencil or pen we're going to measure a square on this corner and this corner measuring 0.75 or three quarters of an inch once it's marked you're going to cut the square out from here and here making sure to cut through both layers so once you've cut out both corners, you're just gonna unfold it and you'll have your finished template. So it'll be the bottom template for your bag. For the round template that's in the description box, I've already pre-scaled it for you to 65%. So all you have to do when you print it is make sure it's printed to actual size. You don't have to scale it yourself. Moving on to materials, we're gonna start with print A. You're gonna need two pieces cut from the round template. What I did was I fussy cut my design in the center here and here, and I had the direction of my fabric going up and down like this. So I have my little owl and my little hedgehog. Or is it a porcupine? Of print A, if you're going to be adding a D-ring or swivel hook to the bottom of your bag, you'll need one piece measuring two and a quarter by one and three quarters. Now, in terms of the direction of the fabric, it's really up to you because if you look at it from the side, the direction could run this way, but then if you look at, at it from here, it could run this way. So it's really up to you. It doesn't really matter for this specific piece because it is so small and where it's located. Next from print B, you'll need one piece cut from the bottom template. I'm using this brown faux leather by Sally Tomato, and I believe this is the legacy one because they have different types of faux leather. And you can also cut your piece from vinyl, as you saw earlier, vinyl, um, faux suede, things like that. Of print C, you're gonna need one piece measuring five and a quarter by nine, and this is for your lining. Now for this piece, I don't recommend directional fabric because this is going to be like this inside, and if your print runs this way, it will be upside down on one of the sides. Of print C, you'll also need two pieces measuring three by one and a half, and these will be for the binding. Next for fusible fleece, you're gonna need two pieces cut from the top round and one piece from the bottom template. Now I'm using Pelon 987F, but you can use a similar fusible fleece. And something I do wanna add is for the bottom template, if you're using a faux leather or material that's already really thick, as you can see here, I have this faux leather that already is really thick. You don't actually have to interface it because of the scale and structure of the bag. I'll show you what I mean. So this one here is actually made with this exact faux leather without interfacing and it still holds up really nicely because it is a really thick material. So use your discretion based on what you're using for print B here on the bottom um, if it needs um, interfacing or not. So if it's thicker you may opt not to. Next, you'll need one number three nylon zipper measuring 11 inches. This is a continuous zipper, which means it's sold by the yard and you can cut it down to size. Mine here is by Emmeline Bags. You also need two zipper pulls. Mine are by Sally Tomato, so I'm mixing brands here, so I hope they slide on well, um, but these are the two I'm using. You also need a half inch D-ring or swivel hook if you choose to add one to your bag. Beginning with our first step, we're gonna start with fusing our fusible fleece. So we're gonna align our print B piece with the bottom template of fusible fleece with the wrong side of the fabric facing the glue or bumpy side. We're just gonna fuse those together. And then we're gonna repeat with the print A and fusible fleece rounds. So the wrong side of the fabric facing the glue or bumpy side, we're just gonna fuse those. 
Just make sure with the faux leather, faux suede you're using, that you put a protective layer between your iron and the material so that it doesn't melt or get damaged. Now that our fusible fleece is fused to all of our pieces, so it looks something like that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna join all of the pieces together. But what I do wanna say is if you're finding that your fusible fleece isn't fusing well to your print B piece, whatever material you used, you can actually sew around really close to the edge using a longer stitch length, just to temporarily hold it in place so that future steps are a bit easier and it doesn't unstick anywhere. But if your fusible fleece is stuck like mine, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna bring one round to each side of the bottom template and we're gonna align them with right sides facing, just like this, on both sides. And then we're gonna sew across here using a quarter inch seam allowance and sew across here using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that those are sewn, we're just gonna open up our rounds and then flip to the back. We're then gonna press our seams either to one side or open. I like to typically press mine open because when I do my top stitch, this is nice and flat here. And I've kind of already given a hint to what we're going to be doing next, but once your seams are pressed to the direction you've chosen, you're going to sew a top stitch on the print B side just below your joining seam here, and the same thing over here. Once you've sewn your top stitch, it'll look something like this on both sides. And something I did realize was I wasn't holding down my leather enough. It's such a thick material that I didn't catch my seam back here, but that's okay. You don't necessarily have to catch it. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my little Tori and Run label and I'm going to attach it to my bag. If you have a handmade tag or something you wanna add, you can do so now. I'm going to add mine in an inch from the edge and then center it with my joining seam right here. We're now going to be sewing our D-ring or swivel hook tab. So if you're not adding either, you can skip this step. We're gonna take our two and a quarter inch by one and three quarter inch print A piece and we're gonna flip to the wrong side we're then going to fold it in half by bringing those one and three quarter inch edges together. We're going to press to crease that center fold. We're then going to open it back up again and bring the one and three quarter inch edges in to that center crease, just like this. We're going to press again to crease the outer folds. And then we're going to fold one more time so that these raw edges are folded inside. So you have a piece like this. We're then going to sew close to the edge on both sides to secure the fold, starting with this open side followed by the folded edge. Now that your D-ring or swivel hook tab is sewn, it'll look something like that. You're now going to get your choice of either a D-ring or swivel hook and you're going to insert it and then fold your tab in half. We're then going to center our D-ring tab or our swivel hook tab with either side here or here. Because I have my label here, I want mine here. So what I did was I just marked the middle of this inner edge and I marked the middle of my tab here I'm going to align them together. That way they're centered with each other. And then I'm just gonna sew across here close to the edge back and forth just to secure the tab in place. Once that D-ring tab is basted in place, we're gonna place our exterior on our lining measuring nine by five and a quarter. So we're gonna place it on top with right sides facing like so. And then we're just gonna trim all the way around so that they're the same shape and size. We're now gonna begin installing our zipper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split or separate it into two halves, like so. Taking your exterior and your two halves of your zipper, we're gonna align one half with each curve. So one here and one here. And we want the right side of the zipper facing the right side of the fabric, just like this. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and base this, but I wanna actually show you a technique that makes it a little bit easier to sew the curve. And I showed this technique in the first version of this project, so that video. So if you've seen that, you probably already know what I'm going to show. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your zipper aligned with that quarter inch seam allowance marking on your machine. So this edge here. Then with this on top with right sides facing, just like this, you wanna make sure you only have a little bit of that tape when you start. You don't wanna start with too much tape like this and then you don't have enough over here. So just make sure you only have a little bit. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna start sewing and when you get to the curved part, you're only going to curve this top layer, not the zipper tape. That will stay straight throughout. What this does, it allows you to maintain that quarter inch seam allowance while sewing the curve but it makes it easier because we're not trying to manipulate the straight zipper to fit the curve. 
Instead, we're only rotating the top. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm going to attach one piece of tape to this curve and one piece of tape to this curve. Once your zipper tape is sewn on both sides, it'll look something like this. So as you can see here, I use that technique and have the quarter inch seam allowance, but I still have that nice curve. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip to the right side and we're gonna take our lining piece that's the same size and we're gonna place it on top with right sides facing and we're gonna align these curved edges and we're gonna sew around here and around here. But what we're gonna do is we're not gonna sew on the lining side, but we're gonna sew on the fusible fleece side and we're gonna sew in line with the seam we just sewed. It'll be easier to also sew on this side because it prevents stretching since our fusible fleece has interfacing and our lining doesn't. If we sew here, this may stretch. So I'm just gonna sew on both sides. Now that that's all sewn together, we're gonna get a pair of scissors and a pair of pinking shears. With the scissors, we're gonna cut off all the extra zipper tape. So from the ends here that we don't need. So just like that, I'm just gonna get rid of all of these little pieces that went flying everywhere. Then what we're gonna do, taking our pinking shears, is we're gonna trim these curves. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim our lining separate from our exterior because we don't wanna trim our zipper tape, because we don't wanna risk this fraying and falling apart. So we only wanna trim this layer and this layer. So I'm gonna grab my pinking shears and I'm going to trim them. If you don't have pinking shears, what you can do is you can get a pair of scissors and cut little notches. My scissors are a bit dull, so I don't know if this will work, but little notches like this all along the curves. That way, if you don't have them, you can still achieve the same outcome. So I'm just gonna grab my pinking shears and I'm gonna start trimming. And as I do this, what I do is I just bend the zipper back behind and it makes it easier because it isolates this layer and I can cut it on its own. And I'm trying not to cut too close to my seams because I don't want them to fall apart at all. Now that that's all trimmed, it'll look something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be inside. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim any extra strings that you have lying around, maybe give it a lint roll. And then from these side rectangles, we're gonna turn it inside out. Just be careful not to put too much pressure because I did have a piece of vinyl that I was working with once with one of these and I actually ripped it right through because I was putting too much pressure, I guess, on that side. So just be gentle when you're turning this inside out. You don't want your material to rip when you're almost done. Now that it's turned inside out, we're just gonna fix the curves so that they're nice and sharp on both sides. So push out the zipper tape. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it to the iron and you're gonna press the fabric away on both sides of the curves. So on this side and on this side, being careful not to apply direct heat on the print B side. Now that it's pressed, I actually have an option for you. So you can either sew a top stitch all along this whole curve here and here, so it'll look something like this one, or you can actually leave it without a top stitch and it'll look like this one. Because this bag is so small and because of the structure, it actually opens just fine without the top stitch. The lining doesn't get snagged at all, especially if it's pressed away from the zipper. So it's up to you if you wanna add a top stitch or not. I'm probably not going to be adding one to mine in this video, but um, you can if you'd like. Once you've done your top stitch or opted not to like me, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do a basting stitch close to the edge, just around this rectangle to hold the exterior and the lining together. This is similar to the larger version. That's because when we bring this together, it'll keep the lining all together with our exterior so it doesn't move and separate. 
Once you've basted the rectangles, we're gonna flip over to the lining side and we're gonna start adding in our zipper pulls. So what we're gonna do on each side is we're gonna bring the ends of the tape back together like so. We're gonna insert one pull from this side. Then on this side, we're gonna do the same. So bring the ends of the, the tape together and then insert the pull and they'll meet in the middle. So I'm gonna do mine off camera because it's kind of tricky to see. So I'm just gonna bring it really close to me so I can see it better. So once the ends of the zipper tape are aligned inside the pull, you're just gonna press a little bit and then place it down and pull the pull through on this side. And then we're gonna repeat over here. So I've just done the same thing on this side. The tape is even inside, so I'm just going to pull it through. I'm then gonna bring the two pulls together in the middle to see if they're inserted correctly. So as you can see here, I have an equal amount of tape on both sides, so I know that they're inserted correctly. If they weren't, I would have more tape on one side than the other, and it would stand out, so it would pull out a bit. So what you can do if you have that is you just pull out one of the pulls and then just offset the tape slightly to balance out the amount of tape that's in here. But since mine is inserted correctly, I'm going to move on to the next step. So in the larger version, the next step would be to sew a couple stitches here and here on both sides of the zipper tape to make sure it didn't open when we pulled our pulls open and turned it inside out. But because this is quite small, it's kind of tricky to get our presser foot in here to baste it together. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it as is and we're just going to open this up, being careful not to pull our pull right through. So here and here. And then we're gonna turn it to the lining side. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our corners. So we're gonna center our zipper with this edge here. So just like this, we just adjust it a little bit. And then we're gonna sew across using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna repeat on this side. But on this side, because we have our D-ring in here, we wanna make sure our zipper is centered with that D-ring. So we're gonna pay extra attention to that right over here. But we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sew across with a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure to catch all of those layers and making sure our D-ring or swivel hook is out of the way so that we don't accidentally sew it because that would damage our needle and possibly damage our machine. Um, and we could also possibly injure ourselves. So we wanna be very careful. I'm just gonna move these a little bit higher because it's a little bit easier to sew when they're moved out of the way. Now that the corners are sewn, we're gonna take our two binding pieces. So I have mine here. And we're gonna put one on each side with the right side facing the bottom. And we're gonna center it just like that. And we're gonna sew across in line with the seam we just sewed. So that quarter inch seam allowance there. and over here, so that quarter inch seam allowance. Now that your binding pieces are attached, we're gonna start to fold it. I've already done this side, but I'm going to show you this side and you're gonna repeat over here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open your binding like so. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press the edge here and here. It'll be the about the size of your seam allowance, so here and here. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold the outer edges over, so on this side and on this side. What this is gonna do is this is gonna conceal the raw edges on the side, so here and over here. Then what we're gonna do, once you press the outer edges here, we're gonna fold this outer edge in, so like so, across, and you can press again so that this edge is nice and crisp. Then you're gonna fold over completely. Let me just tuck this in. Then you're just gonna fold it right over and you can get some quilting clips like I did on the other side, you can actually just clip it in place. So I'm gonna do one side and then I'm going to do the other. So it'll look just like this once it's all clipped and folded in place. So I have both of them like that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew across close to the edge to secure it. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that this fold actually just either is in line with that seam or just covers it. Okay, that way, when we look at the other side, the seam will actually be a pretty equal distance from here as it is from here. Okay, that's just a tip, but if you use sew binding a different way, you can do um, a different way. It's totally up to you, but I'm just gonna go and sew both of these. Once your binding is sewn on both sides, it'll look something like that on both sides. You're gonna turn it inside out just like that. And you're gonna push out these corners. 
And then you can give it a good press if you'd like. Once your bag is pressed, you can just close the zipper by bringing the pulls to the middle. And just like that, your ultra mini version of the two-tone shell zipper bag is complete. So I really hope you enjoyed this additional tutorial for the smaller size with the D-ring or swivel hook. This is how mine turned out. And I once again want to thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers. I can't believe it went up so quickly, but I'm so thankful to have you all here. I just want to say good luck to everyone again entering the giveaway, and I'll see you all next time with a new video.